Amen. And it's about the finished work on the cross. That is why we're here tonight. I especially want to welcome you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. From Genesis to Revelation, I'm yet to find anyone that had an encounter with Jesus that their lives were never the same. Tonight, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. It's a joy and it's a privilege to meet you and to see you. We don't pride ourselves in this, but we pride ourselves knowing that we've been saved by the blood of the Lamb. And in only that, we boast that we are saved by the precious blood of the Lamb. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's just by the Spirit of God tonight. Once again, I welcome you here. I want to take the opportunity to let you know that since we started this program, I may have stepped on a lot of toes. But the word of God comes to prune us, to direct us, to, 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 to tell us to rise up from sin. And we do this not in judgment, but in love. That by all means, one soul will be saved at night. Tonight, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. But most, and most, most importantly, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, even in the midst of your people. Ever present help in times of need. A true friend that sticks closer than a brother. Holy Spirit, tonight, I welcome your majesty. I welcome your awesome presence. Holy Spirit, the personality of Jesus, we welcome your presence tonight. Holy Spirit, the seal on the people that have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb, tonight we welcome you. We welcome you in a very magnificent way. Father, nothing we do or say is by our will, but let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Tonight, it's my prayer that you heal the sick. Break chains of darkness. Father, you set the captives free. You will liberate souls that the enemy has taken captives over. You tell your people that you did not come, but you came to destroy the works of the devil. Tonight we receive your word and we take your word for it in the name of Jesus. Rule in the midst of your people. Let your name alone be glorified. Let your name alone be glorified. Let your name alone be exalted. And let the saints of God say amen. The Holy Spirit is in the house. Praise the name of the Lord. Today is the 18th of December 2013. Child of God, we've left with a few days and then we'll be into the new year. You must understand that we're not only grateful for the goodness of the Lord, but from Genesis, from January, sorry, to December, He has been faithful. As you can see, it's a very short month, 12 months, 365 days. Within the short months, a lot has happened. We have lost many friends, many families. We have lost loved ones. We have lost enemies. We have lost friends. But you're still here. Somebody just clap, give a clap offering unto Jesus. That through it all, he has sustained you. Through it all, some of you even decided to commit suicide, but through it all, the Lord has been faithful. You never thought you would meet December, but you are here. Some of you got sick along the way, but the Lord sustained you. You have not heard of any bad news. Your children were not well, but the Lord sustained you. Financially, you were not sound, but the Lord sustained you. 
job wise you've been believing God for a job for a long time but the good God has sustained you beloved we don't need Christmas to celebrate Jesus you did not hear me I said we do not need Christmas or Xmas or whatever you people call it to celebrate Jesus if you have not for you have you don't remember what the Lord has done for you look at your children I want you to look at your parents look at your siblings look at yourself you had an accident that you were supposed to have been dead but the Lord kept you you went through a very painful divorce that most women went through it and went crazy but the Lord God Almighty has sustained you we owe him every thanks sometimes you don't need anybody to tell you to give God praise if you remember what God has done for you you have to lie down and just roll and say Lord I just want to love you yet we have mastered how to complain we have mastered you don't know you see the accident you had somebody had a very little iota of that they, they, they could not make it the oppression you had somebody had the same thing they did not come home the sickness that was meant to destroy you the Lord sustained you beloved if you're still alive and you can hear the sound of my voice I want you to know that the grace of God has been activated long time ago on the cross it's not because you are good or because you are prayerful it's not because of your righteousness it's not even not because of your obedience it's just by the special grace of God we have every cause to thank him tonight I want somebody to just celebrate Jesus wherever you are I want you to just celebrate Jesus celebrate Jesus because guess what the enemy wanted you to die not only die but die in your sin the enemy wanted you to have died in your iniquity but the, the, a sinner's death does not please God so the Lord had to intervene why? so that you will have the opportunity to seek God beloved I want you to understand that you must seek God whilst he's near how can a young man keep his ways pure how can a young man a strong man how can a young man fresh blooded warm blooded keep his ways pure it's only by living and living in accordance with the word of God if you still doubt what I'm saying I want you to just take a trip to the mortuary and you realize that there are people who have been thrown in there like fishes that are, have more potential than you more beautiful than you more intelligent and smart than you in fact very rich than you there are people who never tap into their potentials yet they did not have the opportunity to see this day child of God I said we have every cause to give God praise we have every cause to give God all the praise praise the name of the Lord I just want to bless God for our lives our families our loved ones we just want to bless God for each and every one of you because anytime I see you tonight as I see you right I see the grace of God at work I see the mercies of God at work I see the invisible God at work in your life you may not see it situation may not tell you your circumstances at the moment it's telling you something different but tonight I came to let you know that you are here for a purpose the fact that things are not going according to your plan 
does not mean that the plan of Christ Jesus has been terminated in your life. The fact that your decisions did not go according to plan does not mean that the Heavenly Father has forgotten you. You must understand that He all things, He does all things in its time. Sometimes with man, it may look so impossible. It may look so hopeless. In fact, people are giving you name because you are useless. Because if you yourself look at yourself and where you are supposed to be and where you are, you can see and sometimes you say to yourself that I have come a long way but I haven't seen anything. You yourself can testify that as you make seven steps, you make 14 steps back. But tonight I want to reassure you that so far as you have life, you have hope. So far as you have Jesus, you have hope. Don't give up on life yet. Don't give up on yourself yet. Wherever you find yourself that you are believing God for opportunity, you must create one. If you don't know how to create opportunity, I am the best example for you to know. I never had to wait for people to call me for programs. I had to create one. And I tell you what, it glorifies God, child of God. You must understand that whatever you want to become is already inside of you. Whatever you want to become, it is inside of you. If you're waiting for someone to push you to become what you want to become, you're going to stay there till you realize you're 95. In fact, some of us, if we are, we are blessed enough to get to heaven, you'll be surprised. Most of us will cry. Because you realize that you were giving opportunities. That you were, you, literally, you, you, you had a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors to be opened for you. The problem is you never made that first step. That first step. Tonight I came to encourage you. That as you begin to walk in the ways of the Lord. As you begin to walk in the wisdom of Christ Jesus. As you begin to walk in the word of God. As you begin to eat the word of God. As you begin to study it. As you begin to pray for the spirit of God to give you that insight. As you begin to allow the spirit of God and the word of God to become life. You will see the manifestation of God. Beloved, when the Bible says Jesus is Lord is true. When the Bible says that he takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise it's true. When the Bible says that with Christ all things are possible it is true. But you must believe it. You must believe it. You must believe it. Tonight I just came here for us to say thank you Jesus. Some of you are still complaining. What the Lord has done even you are still murmuring. Just like the people of Israel did. They murmured. We're still doing the same thing. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you daily say to yourself that you overcome, if you daily take the word of God just as it is, if you daily abide by the word of God, as you meditate upon it day and night, as you study it, as you you, even if you're calling someone as you acquire knowledge through the word of God very soon your generation will see you and call you blessed I used to wait for opportunities in fact I used to feel down and I used to be broken when doors are not open unto me it came a time when people gave up on me it got a time when people would see me and laugh at me. 
Because people were thinking that, oh, what he wanted to become, she never became. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that I have every cause to thank Jesus. You must close your ears from the noise of the people. And open your spiritual ear for the word of God. Because no man can take you where you want to go. It is only Christ Jesus. But Lord Jesus requires us to take that first step. Beloved, as you can see, when a little child is born, it gets to a stage that the child will have to get up and crawl. It gets to a stage that the child will crawl and get up and fall. You must understand that the child will get up and fall. The child will get up and fall. Some children will start from six months. It will take them up to one year. They will get up and fall. 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 But just one day, just one day, I said just one day, just one day. As a mother, I used to watch my son get up and fall, get up and fall, get up and fall. Until one day he rise up and he never fell again. He began to run. Tonight, I pray that as we begin to thank God, may you run for your destiny. Tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus, if you are broken because things are not going according to plan. Tonight, if you are broken because you haven't seen the glory of God yet. Tonight, you are here from January to December. You haven't seen anything yet. I came to tell you that Jesus is always on time. My Jesus is never early. My Jesus is never late. This great man is always on time. This great man Jesus is always on time. The Lord Jesus is always on time. I said it doesn't matter your situation. Instead of looking at your, around your situation, I want you to lift up your eyes onto the hills. The psalmist says, where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the names they've given you. It doesn't matter the names they've given you. It doesn't matter how bad they talk behind your back. Beloved, if you don't know, I said I am a great example for you to know that Jesus can take anything at any time and turn the lives around. I want you to understand that the Lord Jesus does not seek for the qualified, but he qualified the call. As you allow yourself for the Spirit of God to hit you, as you allow yourself for the presence of God to visit you, I said, as you allow yourself for the Word of God to dwell in you greatly, as you allow yourself to abide by the Word of God, not the Word of man, people send me messages and I tell them and I will not stop telling them that you must stop listening to the words of men and listen to the Word of God. Because with man, it's impossible. With man, your situation might be so bad. Even yourself, you look at your situation and you think, how can this be? Mary said to the angel, how can this be? How can this be? How can this be? Since I know no man. Tonight, if you're here like that, say yes, the Spirit of God, with God, all things are possible. With Christ Jesus, all things are possible. Beloved, but it is possible to, for those who that believe. If you believe in Jesus, if you're holding on to you, holding on to his word, I know things are not going well. I know financially, you're not even satisfied. What you will eat tomorrow is the problem. What you will eat next week as people are jubilating Christmas, whatever. You sit down and you ask yourself, what are we going to celebrate about? Because this year has been so bad. You're asking yourself, God, what am I here? What am I supposed to thank you for? Because I have prayed, I have fasted. 
They said, Holy life, I'm trying my best. But I still cannot see your glory. Tonight I came to tell you that my Lord Jesus is never early. My Lord Jesus is never late. Christ Jesus is always on time. If you're here, you want to give up on life. You're here, you want to give up on God. You are here, you want to try other means because things are not going well. I said, I came in the name of Jesus. That the Lord Jesus, who is able to take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I still believe in Jesus. Tonight I came here because I believe in Jesus with you. I believe in Jesus with you. I know. I know. I know you're saying that Esther, you don't understand. In fact, what you're saying is understatement. Because I have tried it all. There is no program that I've not been to. In fact, because I cannot get a job, I have become a church goer daily. It's not weekly, but daily. Yes, still I'm yet to see the glory of God. Is there anything? yourself is to study the word of God is to seek worship to the Lord is to be prayerful 
most of us are going through a lot and that a lot that we're going through instead of us going on our knees and seeking Christ Jesus it is able to knock us down and we're not able to pray but the Bible says we must pray without ceasing beloved our weapon is the word of God and our weapon is prayer without these tools we cannot do anything you can go to about 100 to 50 to 1000 ministers and send them the same messages let me tell you something the reason why it's important for you to learn to pray learn to seek the face of God learn to walk in righteousness by the help of the Holy Ghost is this people will not tell you but tell you the truth sometimes you want me to pray remember me in prayer pray for me I'm so tired I come from work I come here and I go to bed I pray and I sleep because the battle you are battling with if you're a true child of God you must understand that we fight not against flesh and blood so you asking people to pray for you is not enough and every man of God every woman of God who would have lied to you or who would have taught you to rely on people for prayer they did not help you that's why anytime you come here I will tell you to pray in fact pray and pray for men of God be prayerful stop being lazy but be prayerful I said stop being lazy and be prayerful instead of talking too much let your words be few and use those words before the presence of God most of the times we are very very talkative I've never seen this generation of Christians we talk so much you can meet a lady within one to three minutes and you know everything about them already. Because they talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and, and then I ask, you see the way you are able to talk, do you talk like this before God? I ask somebody, do you really talk before like this before the one who is able to help you? <laughs> it's not me, yo. I cannot help you. I'm only a human in fact I'm just like you somebody's laughing you people don't like truth it's true you don't you don't like truth you want me to say I just pray for this okay that the Spirit of God will lead me to pray for people I don't even tell him I just go through the page and I begin to intercede for people but I'm human just like you if you have found the truth and you want to look, you want to follow Christ, you know, pure and truly with a pure heart. If by the grace of God you've left the broad way and on the narrow road, you must understand that I am just like you. <laughs> you don't know, you people don't like truth. I tell you the truth. That's why people will take your money and eat it and sleep. Me, I don't need your money, but I'll tell you the truth that you must learn to pray. From January to, to December, if you have not yet spent time with God, you should be ashamed of yourself. I said, if you have not yet spent time with God, quality, and you are still walking about receiving prayer and sowing unnecessary seed, you are making people rich. But you yourself, spiritually, you are very lean. If you have not taken time to take the word of God and study the word of God and kneel before wherever you find yourself and say, Lord Jesus, I have heard a lot about you. Lord Jesus, I want to make you my priority. I want to make you all. Lord, I said, 
from January to December. That is why some of us are alive, or because we are the Lord is not true with us yet. We are working progress that the Lord is working on us. We might be here today, but next year by now, not all of us will be here. You people don't like truth. You must make sure that you have peace with God. Make sure you have a personal relationship with God. Don't just, you know, don't just put your, your Bible in your pocket, in your bag. Don't just put your Bible, when you finish church, leave it somewhere. And sleep and keep on sinning, gossiping, committing adultery, fornication. And some of you, because you are rich, you are able to, to, you are able to manipulate some of the pastors with presents and gifts. So they will not tell you to come out of sin. Beloved, guess what? You are not doing anybody any favor, including yourself. Beloved, a time is coming that you will stand. I always say this, that you will stand and the video you will see about yourself, you will not like it. You will ask the operator to fast forward it. December, this is in 25th, 26th, is coming 31st. Instead of people lying down and saying, Father, what do you require of me? Father, I want to have peace with you. I want to make it right. I want to start it all over with you. I want to serve you with my heart. I want to do it to glorify you. This is where some of you will get drunk and dance and smoke. Some of you will go to your boyfriends, your married boyfriends and unmarried boyfriends. Mary go to club everywhere and then on Sunday dress and go to church. If you, you hear my voice tonight, I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord Jesus. That you must look at your life and repent. someone can repent and for the spirit of God to touch them, they would have given the spirit of God their will. That is why I said tonight we have every cause to thank God. Because at least we are here and we can make things right. We can make things right. We can make things right. Some of you, if you refuse to repent, the word of God that you've ever heard. If we are not careful and we die in our secret sins, and you end up in hell, and there is coming that they will show you some of these videos and remind you. The Bible says this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty, all the duty of man has been laid down to fear God. How do we fear God if we don't know his word? How do we fear God if we don't love him? How do we fear God if we don't seek him? How are we able to fear God by just going to church every Sunday and sitting down? And listening to some of the word of God that are out of season. Some of us go to places where the man of God will never tell you to repent. Because he himself for years have not repented yet. You know that some of the preaching is, is a gift, is a talent. Naturally there are people who are able to talk well. The fact that you are able to talk well eloquently. The fact that you have, you've been able to master the word of God. It does not mean the Lord is pleased with us. Child of God, we must all look at ourselves. We are on a journey. And if you don't know, every day draws us closer to the end of the earthly journey. 
there's coming a transition that this earth, the journey on this earth will be over and we will start an eternal journey. That is when some of us will sit down and look at our lives and see how wasteful we have become. Please, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I speak to you in humility and in love. I speak to you in the love of Christ Jesus. That don't wait till things are so bad before you seek God. Seek the Lord whilst he can be found. He may be found. Call upon him or while he's near. Seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he's near. That means the time is coming that you will know that he is far from you. But now that there is mercy and there's grace, beloved, seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he's near. I'm not talking about going to church every time. Going to church is good. The Bible says we should not forsake the assembly of the saints. And I ask you, what is the assembly of the saints? The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name. That is where my presence is. What is the church is your body. The Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That the Spirit of God dwells in you? Please, tonight, I don't want you to just be a churchgoer like everyone else. For once, I want you to sit down and ask yourself, what is my purpose? Lord Jesus, I've given my life to you for a long time. The last time I checked, I've always been going to church. But why is it that I cannot see your face? Sometimes you feel like the Lord is away from you. Sometimes you know that when you kneel to even pray, that is when you sleep more. Sometimes when you open the Bible, that is when you're able to sleep like a baby. Beloved child of God, yesterday we learned that you've been bought with a price. You have been purchased with a price. So far as somebody has bought you, your life is not your own anymore. Do you know that Listen, do you know that this dress, I didn't sew it, but I went to buy it? The moment I bought this cloth, it belongs to me now. So if the Bible says that we be purchased with the price, that means your life belongs to Jesus. So much as you do what you like, you can believe in what you like. You may have been born into a family that believe in a different religion. But you must understand that your soul belongs to Jesus. That means a time is coming that the owner of your soul, your body is coming. The owner of your body is coming. The owner of your body is coming. It is important that he finds you faithful. It is important and we pray that the Lord will find us faithful through his mercies. But the Bible says that those whose names are not found in the book of life, they will be cast in the lake of fire. Beloved, we just want to thank God for the mercies of God. We must always thank God for saving our souls through the blood of Jesus. But it's up to us to walk in the righteousness of God. Somebody said to me, salvation is free. Truly so, it's free. 
Nobody has ever said salvation is expensive. We're buying it. If 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 and grace is free. But Paul said we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Beloved of God, this is one soul a night. It's a program that is not made by man, but it's a program that we come here and remind you that daily we are making a journey with Jesus. We are making a journey with Jesus. We are on a journey with Christ Jesus. Every day brings us closer and every day makes it clear of the journey we are into and where we're heading. Right now, if the Son of Man should appear, if the rapture should come now, will you be able to stand? If the rapture should come now, will the Lord Jesus find you faithful? If the rapture should come now, Will the Lord find you faithful? It doesn't matter how much you know about the Bible. It doesn't matter how you're able to argue. It doesn't matter how you feel, how much you feel you know. It doesn't matter whether you believe in Jesus or not. It doesn't matter whether you believe that there's heaven or hell or not. Please, whether we believe it or not, it's appointed once for man to die. And after death, judgment. Hebrew 9, 27. It is appointed once for man to die. And after death, judgment. Beloved, the time is coming that you realize that every night was an opportunity. It was an opportunity for you to draw closer to God. It was an opportunity for you to turn from your wicked ways. It was an opportunity for you to let go of your pride and arrogance. It was an opportunity for you to let go of your lustful desires. It was an opportunity for you to have given God your 100%. Every night was an opportunity for you to have given God your all. A time is coming that you would wish that the crown would have turned over but it would be too late. Child of God, we are going to the end of the year. And if you don't believe, look at this year. Each and every one of us have got a year added to a year. I don't know who, 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 who is here who has never had a year added to their year this year. By all means, by 31st, everybody would have had a year added to your year. And as you can see, every year, it draws us closer to our grave. Every day. Every day draws us closer to our grave. It's about time for us to sit down, all of us, analyze our lives, and live our lives as if it is the last day. Analyze your life. Don't live your life for someone. And don't do things because somebody is doing it. Don't look at someone and say, because they are doing this, I'm also doing it. Because they do this, I'm also doing it. You must sit down and ask yourself, am I in the will of God? 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 We go to Matthew chapter 22. I want you to open your Bible and say, and go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus Christ. Are you there? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise, Jesus Christ, Jesus 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 22. The parable of the wedding banquet. That is the subheading. Hmm. Please. Let's listen to the word of God. Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like a king who prepared Oh, let's, let's read from King James. Some of you like King James version, so let's read that one. And Jesus answered, and Jesus answered and spoke unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. The king made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidding to the wedding. That means there were people who were, there were some people who were forbidding to come to the wedding. Do you understand? There were some people who were forbidding to come to the wedding. But this time he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidding to come to the wedding, and they will not come. They did not want to come. Those that were meant to come to the wedding did not want to come. Hey. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my father, my, my families are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Hey. They were being invited to come to the banquet of Christ. Haya. Five. And he says, But they made light of it and went their ways. One of his farm, another of his merchandise. That means they went about their business. Those who were meant to went meant to come to the banquet of Christ, they did not come. They did not want to come to the banquet of Christ Jesus. They went about their business. Six. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murders and burned up their city. Then said he, his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidding were not worthy. Not worthy. Now he says, go ye therefore into the highways. Go into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. The Bible says he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But to them that received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But to them that received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. You know that the Jewish people were supposed to, because that's where Jesus came from, according to the word of God. But we the Gentiles will be saved by the grace of God. We have been saved by the special grace of God. Because of the blood of the Lamb today, I and you, we can say, Abba Father. This is where our salvation comes in. Because those that were his own did not receive him. But to those that receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. 
The Lord has given you the power to become his child. We have had the opportunity to know Jesus and become his children. Yet we are disobedient. This generation, we have forgotten that the Lord Jesus had to come and pay the price for us. We have forgotten that he bought us with a price that is very expensive. Tonight, if you're here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Tonight, you are here. You have taken Christ Jesus for granted. It's an opportunity for you to sit down and ask yourself that whatever I'm doing that is against the will of God, does it please God? If everybody is doing what they're doing, does it please God? Everybody's saying it, everybody's wearing it, does it please God? We must have a right standing with God. We must stand, if we still call ourselves Christians, we must really and truly have a personal relationship with Christ. We must have a personal relationship with Christ. I said we must have a personal relationship with Jesus. That is why you can go to church for years. You may be working in the name of God. But Jesus might not know you. Because you don't, we don't do things to please this man. We don't do things to please Jesus. This is a man who did a banquet, a party for, for his people. He told his servants to go and invite his people to come and eat. Come and dine my, 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 uh, for, for the bride. And they went about their business. Now he told the servants to go and get the people on the roadside, me and you, the Gentiles. Today we've known Christ, we've given our life to Jesus. And beloved, we do what we like. Today if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. If you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. If you're here and you hear the voice of Christ Jesus, do not harden your heart. If you need, you know yourself, you need to return back to Christ, do so. Because I always say that now is the time we have. The next second, the next minute is not guaranteed. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The fact that we can breathe, we can walk, we can talk, does not guarantee us tomorrow. It is appointed once for man to die and after ju death judgment. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have an everlasting life. In this year coming, as this year is coming to an end, it's my prayer that it will be an opportunity for us to put Christ first. I pray that it will be an opportunity for us to prioritize Christ Jesus. I pray that it will be an opportunity for us to make peace with Christ. I pray that it is an opportunity for us to have a personal and an intimate relationship with Jesus. It is my prayer that we will not do things to please men but to please Christ. It is my prayer that we will receive the true and genuine love of Christ. Now that there is grace, that now that there is mercy, now that we can, now that we can, now that we can, there's a simple message of salvation. The intents of us repenting, the intents of us sanctifying ourselves, walking in the righteousness of God is very, very urgent. Because anything is possible and anything can happen. Everything the word of God said about the coming of Christ, the end time, it is all here. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. We must make things right with him. We must make peace with Christ Jesus. We must make 
right things right with Christ Jesus. We must make things right, right with Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter how bad you see your situation. Tonight, I give you Jesus. If you accept the love of Christ in your heart, if you allow Christ Jesus to come into your heart, if you allow Jesus to come and dwell in you greatly, beloved, you'll be a blessing. Not just physical blessing, but spiritually you'll be blessed. That is why it's important for us to see God through his word. See God in prayer. Be prayerful in this world. If you know that this world is a temporal place, you will not live as if you're living here forever. But you will live as if you have an accountability to give to Jesus. Everything we're doing, everything we're saying, everything we're looking, every thought that comes in our mind, a day is coming that we'll be accountable for it. Child of God, let Christ Jesus dwell in you greatly. Let the word of God dwell in you greatly. If you're walking or sitting in your car, you don't have anything to play. Get a lot of videos, CDs about Christ Jesus, put it in, about the Bible, put it in and begin to listen to. Acquaint yourself with the word of God. Ask the spirit of God to give you insight through his word. It is very important. It's much better than being on phone for hours. It's much better than fame and profane babbling. Seeking Christ Jesus in his word is much better. It makes you wiser. The more you seek God, the more you pray, the more you study the word of God, the more you pray, you realize that you will even stop going to people for prayer. Because you yourself, Christ Jesus, lives in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Tonight, I bring you Jesus and I bring you the love of Christ. It is my prayer that at the end of this year, by the end, you'll be a new person. You'll be a person that will not chase after the creation, but the creator. You'll be a person that will be hungry and thirsty for more of Christ Jesus. You'll be a person that will not just be a churchgoer, but you'll be a person that will prepare her soul and spirit and body for the coming of Christ. It is my prayer. That is why this program is not for everybody. Because if you're here waiting for somebody to say you'll be blessed, you'll be this. No. We believe in the principles of Christ Jesus through his word. And we believe that if you follow it, if you follow the word of God, if you allow it to abide in you, if you live by it, if you walk in it daily, relying on the Holy Spirit with Christ Jesus, there's nothing impossible with him. This is it. I just want to bless God for your life. We must all repent, all of us. All of us, we must go before Christ Jesus. Today is the 18th. We have about... Um, about 13 days to get to 31st. I want you to take a little time out of your day every day. If you can fast to do so, please. And be prayerful. Ask God to help you. Ask Him that you want to know Him better. Ask Him that you want to have a proper relationship with Him. Let's allow the Spirit of God to come inside of you. It doesn't matter. The circumstances, the situation. If you allow Jesus to dwell in you greatly, a year by now, you will testify that not only has the Lord blessed you, but you have seen the hand of God in your life. You have become prayerful. You have become more spiritual. You are walking in the ways of God. You are studying the word of God. You have to, the, the spirit of God has transformed you. I bless God for your life. I thank God for each and every one of you. This is our prayer. That you will not live here the same. We don't have anything to give you. But what we have, we give you. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. You and your household will be saved. You did not hear me. I said this Christmas, I don't have anything that I can give you. But this I have, I give you. 
that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household walk in the ways of the Lord and you will see the manifestation of Christ Jesus. Abide by the word of God and from now onwards, nobody will fool you because you will walk in the word of God. You will live by the word of God. You will study the word of God. It will make you, you become like a dynamite. The word of God, the word of God, the pure word of God. As you begin to study it, as you begin to rely on it, every situation you are in, you ask yourself, what is your word saying, Lord? What is your word saying concerning my marriage? Father, I want to make this move. What is your word saying? Holy Spirit, what do you think? What are you saying? Father, I'm relying on you. I need you. I cannot do this alone. I cannot walk alone. I cannot live in righteousness alone. I cannot live in holiness alone. I cannot do this alone. Solely relying on the Holy Spirit. Relying solely, fully on the Holy Spirit. It makes you humble. It brings you to a place that you realize that it's not your beauty. It's not your wisdom. It's not your, how good you are. But it's just by the grace of God. May the Lord bless you. If you're here tonight, you want to give your life to Jesus. Beloved, I want you to understand. The other day we said something. We said the prayer of the sinner. The only prayer of the sinner that the Lord Jesus here is a prayer of repentance. Is a prayer of what? Repentance. Is a prayer of repentance. Is a prayer of coming back to Christ and saying, Father, I have wronged you. I want to give my life to you. The prayer that our Lord Jesus here is a heart that is broken before him. A contrite spirit. A spirit that will say, Lord, I want to give you my life. I want to start again with you. I have realized I've sinned against you. Just like David did in Psalm 51. That is the prayer the Lord listens to. Tonight you're here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Please, I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to just lift up your hands. I want you to just lift up your hands. I want you to just lift up your hands. And wherever you are, I want you to talk to Jesus. I just want you to open your mouth and talk to Jesus. Just open your mouth and talk to Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and talk to Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and talk to Jesus. If you feel like repenting, if you feel convicted, I want you to speak to the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, hear my humble cry. While all others that were calling do not pass me by. Tonight, let this be your prayer. Let this be your prayer. Let this be your prayer. The Savior, 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 hear my humble cry. Hear my humble cry. While all others that were calling, Father, do not pass me by. While you're calling your people, in this end time, while you're gathering your people, as you're preparing your people for your coming, do not pass me by. Lord Jesus, me and my household, me and my family, as you're preparing for your people, as you're preparing to come for your people, Daddy, do not pass me by. 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 Somebody just speak to the Lord. If you repent, let's let him know. Let's let him know a pure and a contrite heart. A pure and a contrite spirit. The Lord will not reject. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. The salvation journey. This narrow road. It is an individual affair. Nothing to do with anyone. It is you. The Lord has given you your will. You want to give it back to him tonight? You want to say, Lord, I want to give you my all. Lord, I want to start again. 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 Father, I want you to teach me your ways. Father, I have made a lot of mistakes. But tonight I come to you and I plead the blood of Jesus. 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 I plead the blood of Jesus that you will wash me, that you will cleanse me, that you will purify me, you will sanctify me, you will make me whole. Father, I pray. Come on, somebody open your mouth. Whatever will not allow me to get into your presence, whatever will not allow me to remain wrong trouble tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody just open your mouth. Anything that I'm doing that is against your will, Daddy, I want you to show me. I want you to show me your ways. Father, I want you to show me your ways. Ah, uh, show me your ways. Show me your ways. Show me your ways. Somebody speak to the Lord. If you want to be honest, do so. Say, Father, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with that powerful hand. Somebody speak to the Lord. 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 Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Don't be shy. Don't be shy about it. Wherever you are. It is difficult to walk in righteousness. It is. Because no man can do it on their own. Tonight I want you to ask the Spirit of God. While praying, say, Lord Jesus. I come to you tonight. I've heard your word. And I've realized I've made a lot of mistakes. Done a lot of things that are against your will. Daddy, I want to confess my sins and I want you to start it all again. I want to start it with you, Jesus. I need you in my heart, Jesus. I need you in my life, Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you came to die for me. I believe you came to die for me. Tonight I take you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I want you to be on this journey with me. I want you to sanctify me, Jesus. I want you to walk with me. This journey is not easy. Because if you're young, especially the youth, everything around you tells you that you can do what you like. Everything tells you that you can do what you like. The world is telling you you can do what you like. You run into God, you go to church and they tell you you can do what you like. You don't know where, the way out. Tonight, wherever you are, I want you to bow down and say, Father God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. The Bible says, For they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on the name of Jesus. 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 This is our daily prayer. It's a prayer that you must do every second, every minute if you have the opportunity. You cannot do it alone. You must make the Spirit of God your priority. Make Jesus your priority. Make the Word of God your priority. If you're making time for anything, make time for God. Make time for God. Beloved, make time for God. Make time for God. Make time for God. Make time for God. If you make Him your priority, He will make you His priority. This is one solar night. If you are praying with us, you're giving your life to Jesus tonight. I want to welcome you tonight in the body of Christ. You must understand that Jesus loves you. And wherever you are that you've given your life to Jesus, he himself, the Spirit of God, will come in and work on you. himself will come the guilt, the shame it's all it was all nailed on the cross so you must walk boldly to the throne room of grace as you're giving your life to Jesus and speak to the Lord daily, speak to the Lord every minute, second allow the spirit of God to reign in you allow the power of God to reign in you and your life will never be the same again. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. May the Lord bless you tonight. One soul a night. We know every day the Lord do something new. A lot of testimonies. But we don't come here to share anymore. Because the greatest testimony... It's not who got healed or who the Lord showed mercy, but it's the one who gave their life to Jesus. When 
the Lord gives you testimony. It doesn't cost the whole host of heaven to rejoice. But when one soul gives their life to Jesus, the Bible says the whole host of heaven rejoices. Praise the name of the Lord. And it glorifies God. That is why we are here. So we don't glory in these things. That we glory knowing that our names are written in the book of life. When the disciples were telling Jesus that the blind are seeing, the lame are walking, we see miracles, Jesus said to them, do not glory in this, but glory in the fact that your names are written in the book of life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. I want to bless God for your life. I want to bless God for your family. We want to bless God for the loved ones, even the enemies, even those who came to observe, even the spectators. We want you to know that truly we love you with the love of Christ Jesus. Some of you, because you took the word and turned it around, some people have come to see and they've given their life to Jesus. May the Lord bless you. You are doing the work of evangelists. You don't even know. May the Lord bless you indeed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. May his face shine upon you. I want you to be prayerful. I want you to study the word of God. I want you to study it as if you've gone on an exam. I want you to get closer. Acquaint yourself with the spirit of God. And whatever you hear, make sure it aligns with the word of God. It is very important. Whatever you hear or do, make sure it aligns with the word of God. Do not just walk about and take anything you see. That is why you must study the word of God. It is very important to study the word of God because it is through the word of God that we have that enlightenment. The word of God is able to transform our lives. Before the, the spirit of God would have transformed you, you would have had to replace it with the word of God. Very important. That's why it's important for us to study the word of God. May the blessed Lord bless you indeed. I appreciate you tonight. I don't take you for granted. I respect you. Some of you have sent messages. The messages are so many. Sometimes I'm so tired. I would lie to you. I'll be reading and I'll fall asleep. I'm still reading and I'll be sending, you know, I'll reply by the grace of God. So please don't be upset with us. It's not because of any pride or anything. It's just tiredness. I get really, really tired. Very tired. As you can see, I've got cold to mix. It's not going on. I'm tired. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Have a good night. I love you with the love of Christ Jesus. And there's nothing you can do about it. Including those who come to insult us. Including those who come to give us all the, the, their faces. We love you with the love of God. You know that if you want to make heaven. And you don't love people. You won't get there. So we love you not because of anything. We love you because we want to make heaven. So it's our duty to love you. And you, there's nothing you can do about it. You can come every night and insult us. You can come and send us insults every day. It will not stop us from coming to talk about Jesus. It will not prevent us from saying what Christ wants us to say. Because we know that by all means, one soul will be saved. May the Lord bless you. And know this. That without holiness, with all we do, everything we're doing, without the righteousness of God, we will not be able to see Him. May the Lord bless you. 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 May the Lord bless you.